Hello guys, welcome to a new country. We're in Vietnam and welcome to Saigon. I've literally just landed, got to my hotel. Very nice actually, just checked in. It's called the Common Inn in Tiao Dien, District 2. But I wanted to come straight out because I haven't eaten today. I was in a rush, rush to pack, rush to get to the airport. So I haven't eaten today. So we're gonna come out, have a little look, get a feel for what Saigon is like in District 2 and hopefully find some food. Tiao Dien or District 2 is, I guess, more of an expat area. I did think about staying in District 1, but to be honest, I wanted somewhere which was a little bit less hectic. And let me tell you, coming here from the airport, I took a bike taxi, actually, just because I wanted to beat the rush hour traffic. And this city is crazy. More crazy than I expected. Has some cool streets that we went through. Really, really strong energy here, good vibe. But my God, it is crazy. I mean, I've been to some big cities in my time. Bangkok, for instance, is crazy. But this is like a whole new level. Just traffic everywhere, honking constantly. People everywhere as well. As you can see, even in the quieter district, it's pretty busy. Now, this is beautiful. This tree with lights on but bikes absolutely everywhere, honking to get people out of their way. And uh, yeah, as I said, just a really buzzing vibe. And already you can start to see the streets are lined with street food. This woman is selling, looks like boiled eggs. Or duck eggs, it looks like. More street food here, it looks like ban jiao. Look at that little Vietnamese pancake. But I've got to admit, guys, I'm feeling a little bit out of my comfort zone. I don't speak any Vietnamese at all. I mean, literally nothing. And I really don't know that much about the food. I mean, I know pho, everyone knows pho, of course. And I know ban mi, which is the bread. So the sandwich that they make out of that. But, I really don't know that much. So I'm feeling out of my comfort zone for that reason. But also, I think I just fell into my comfort zone in Thailand. I mean, six months in Thailand is a long time. I picked up some of the language and uh, yeah, became very familiar with everything. Now, either my anxiety is back or I'm just massively out of my comfort zone. It's a lot more, should we say, raw? than I expected. I think that's maybe a nice way to say it. I mean, you've got shops overspilling onto the street. Just, uh, yeah, raw. I think it's more raw than I expected. I'm not saying that in a bad way. More street food. Bun bò hue. I think bun is like rice noodles and bò is beef. So I have looked at a couple of words to try and pick out a couple of words, but yeah, I guess this is the beef here. And, uh, these are the veg that goes into it, but I don't fancy that as my first meal. Let's keep walking. All right, already I have a friendly welcome from Nung and Ni, who just said hello to me as I was walking past. And they're eating this, and this is called... <laughs> Good luck with me pronouncing that. Hello. Well, steady. You got, nerv got nervous on camera. Hello. Oh, hello. Kids are cute everywhere. Okay, what is, what is this called? Bung, bung Kang. No. What do we, you change your mind now? Basically, it's like a sheet of rice flour batter. Do I want to try? Okay, I don't have any chopsticks though. Here we go, whatever this is. It looks like it's like a flat sheet of rice paper, which has been cut up with a little bit of chili and herbs. Thank you. All right. You know how to use? I do. But let's, uh, where do I put the camera? That's the... Do I know how to use chopsticks? Okay. All right. Let's try some. Oh, I should actually look. This is mango. Ah, mango. Ah, but it's like, I mean, it, it's, <laughs> it's stuck in there. It's not me just being bad at chopsticks. 
All right. All right. I've got a little bit out. I tiny, bit tiny bit. Fancy. Okay. I mean, look at that. It literally looks like a little bit of plastic. Not that I'm mocking it. It just does look like a little bit of plastic. And apparently, green mango as well. A little bit spicy. So, what did you say it was called? The name? Pancake yeah. Jong. Yeah. Okay. Let's try it. The for teenagers. For teenagers? Maybe you don't, maybe you don't like it's it. It's chewy. <laughs> OK, it's very interesting. The rice paper has a texture, which is quite hard to chew, actually. But once you get into it and your saliva softens it, it becomes a lot nicer, it becomes softer. The green mango is delicious, very sour, very acidic. Not very, but there's a sourness and an acidity to it. And then you have the chili and the freshness from the herbs come through. It's pretty good, I'd say. Very nice snack. What a surprise. Now your turn to try it. My turn. Lovely. Lovely? <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you. I need to go and find some proper food, but it was fun having a chat with these guys. Oh, friendly, friendly. It's always nice to get a warm welcome in a new place, right? But they did warn me, be careful holding the camera out because people come along on bikes and swipe it out of your hand. Haven't really had to worry about that in the places I've been so far. Oh, anyway, let's carry on walking to find some proper... Oh, hello. Let's carry on walking to find some proper food. Oh, look what we have here. Bami. I said it was one of the famous dishes in Vietnam, and you cannot go anywhere without seeing banh mi. And essentially, the banh mi is the bread, and inside goes the pate, the pickles, and this huge stack of different cured meats. But I think I want something more filling, having not eaten today, and I have a plan to make a banh mi video, so we'll skip this, but I'm sure it's amazing. Interesting. <laughs> I, d I actually don't even know what he's meant to be. Supple preparation uncensored toner. Nice. Nice to meet you. <laughs> there you go. Welcome to Saigon. <laughs> Got me and my new friend here in Saigon. Made friends with uh, Tube. <laughs> Welcome to YouTube. Nice to meet you. Thank you. You know, I love seeing stuff like this. This lady is selling fresh noodles from her house. They're good. Um, They're good? It's good. It's good? Yeah. You just buy the fresh noodles? Yes, fresh noodles. And then you cook them at home? Yes. Ah. Okay. There you go, you buy them by the weight. I presume they make them. She's selling all different types of meats cured here. But yeah, she is the clearly the noodle lady because people are driving up and ordering from her. How cool is that? Now the light has started to drop, the street, the atmosphere has totally changed. Even cooler vibe. And actually, this uh, looks like a ruin bar, actually. Used to those in Hungary, just over here. But yeah, the streets, full of street food carts. You can smell the smells of them cooking stuff. There are a lot of foreigners around. As I said, this is an expat area, but we will explore the other districts. coming past a little area of street stalls and there's one that looks pretty good. So maybe, maybe we found our dinner spot. All right. This is it, just on the side of the road on the little intersection. It's literally just a converted motorcycle. Looks like a Honda Dream. Paddy would be happy. A converted Honda Dream where they've just put the seat up and they've got the street food cart on the back. And it is Northern style. I know, I know, but it looks good. Northern style fish noodles. Just on the back of here, how good does that fried fish look? Maybe with a little turmeric on the outside of it. Never had these before. And why not, as our first proper food in Saigon, why don't we have it? Because if the smell is anything to go by, it's going to be good. And you know it's gonna be busy because they have bags and bags of veg. You've got shredded cabbage, Maybe taro stems? It doesn't look like morning glory. Maybe it's morning, glo morning glory. There's coriander in there. There's fresh green chilies and then more veg cut up. 
you've got another pack of it here. You've got all of the fried fish, little limes cut up, and then this, this is the soup. This is what's smelling so good. Just look at the color of that soup. Look at these noodles, the color of them. I saw the bag here, I thought, this was literally plastic bands for the takeaway deliveries, but it's actually not. It's actually the noodles. How awesome. I have no idea what they're made from. And I love this little genius. You've got the soup boiling away here, but because of the space, of course, I mean, it is just a little street stall. You've got the pots with water where the noodles will be cooked. They're absolutely loving it here. <laughs> Always friendly, friendly entry into Saigon. Right, I've ordered. Ordered one bowl with the thin white rice noodle. So, noodle into the little basket, into that pot of water, like I said, with a little bit of that veg. So quick, only seconds in the hot water. And then some of that fish cake sliced into the bowl. This crispy fried fish. How good does that look? Still with the skin on. And finally, that hot soup. Dill. And what is it? Mm, interesting, a crumb. No idea what that is. And to the table. Uh, oh, here, maybe down here. Yeah. Not many seats, just a few little tables. Thank you. But come on. How good does this look? All right, guys, let me give you a quick little rundown of what we have in here. We saw it go into the bowl, but look how clear that broth is. But there's a little bit of oil on the top, probably from where that fish is fried. So it's going to be that fishy oil, absolutely full of flavor. We've got those large pieces of fish in there with that crispy, crispy coating. I think it looks like maybe it's been coated in turmeric, but you still have the skin on top and if you like fish skin you know how flavorful that is but look it's just slices of the fish you also have thin slices of this fish cake and this will be again pounded fish flesh which has been cooked and steamed probably into the cake and then thinly sliced and put into that soup you've got those taro stems you've got the dill as i said and really didn't expect to see dill here and then underneath, you've got those thin white rice noodles. And then finally garnished with that crumb on top. And I really don't know what that crumb is. Oh, and I should just say on the side, they brought out some blanched bean sprouts, which you know I'm not the biggest fan of, some greens and some of that cabbage. You also have on the side, this red, looks spicy, but full of chili seeds, red pounded chili paste. Pickled onions, well, onions and vinegar, let's say. I don't know how long they've been in there. They may not be pickled, but onions and vinegar, and then limes and that green chili. So, first of all, I want to try this crumb and see what this crumb is. Mmm, I still have no idea. <laughs> Isn't it amazing being in a new country? It's good though, nice texture. It looks like little eggs, anyway. Let's try the soup and see what it needs. Oh, clean, so clean. Slightly salty, obviously from the fish, a fish broth is going to be slightly salty. It's gonna have that flavor profile. So we're going to hit it with lime juice. We're gonna get maybe a whole lime in there. I've washed my hands, don't worry, through the fingers to catch the seeds. And then the other thing I know, which I've seen, is get the lime and just rub it on your chopsticks just to sterilize them a little bit. A little bit of that chili. I'm not sure how spicy it is, so we'll just go with a touch of that. And then I would like to get some of these onions on there as well. They smell good, but they smell slightly raw. I don't think they're as pickled as I expected. Let's give it a stir, get it mixed in. And then we'll be ready to eat. Right, let's try that broth now. 
Mm. Oh, wow. That chili has a punch. Maybe, maybe I even put slightly too much in there, but flavorful, fresh chili, a nice kick to it. The lamb juice really cuts through the saltiness of that broth, but you still get that deep, rich, intense fishy flavor. Really, the broth is spectacular. I did hear that the soup dishes here in Vietnam are world class. And for just a, you know, a little place on the street, I didn't expect that good to try it with some of those rice noodles. The essence for me, in terms of my basic knowledge of Vietnamese cuisine, the essence of Vietnamese cuisine is the fresh herbs. And although the flavors are strong in here, the dill freshens the whole thing up. Now, I'm not going to lie, I'm not normally a fan of fish cake, fish balls, anything like that. Normally, well, I'm not really a fan of those balls anyway, pork or beef, but if I am, it's really, fish balls are really not for me. But just look how thinly sliced and actually tasty does that look. You can see just the outside of it, darker. I'm not really sure what that is. Maybe they've charred it or cooked it to get that. Oh, wow. The flavor is subtle of fish. It's not fishy. The texture is nice. It's not that rubbery, horrible, well, the reason I don't like it, but it's, it's light, it's fluffy. The flavor very nice, nicely salted, but because it's been sat in that broth, it's sucked up some of the flavor of that broth and it's got that sourness because this broth isn't just fishy, it's tangy, it's salty, it's fishy, yes, and it's light with the dill too. That's in the fish cake. And you know what I love, sat here on the street, literally on the street, on tiny plastic chairs, plastic tables, just eating an amazing bowl of noodles. This is exactly what being in Southeast Asia is all about. I think it's time to try some of that fried fish. Let's get a piece of that up. Crispy, golden fried fish. There may be bones in it, of course. You can see the white flesh inside. If I can show you, you can see the white flesh inside and then that crunchy coating on the outside as a bone is pointing out at me. There are bones in it, so be careful. You wouldn't want to get that caught in your throat, would you? Mm. Because it's been deep fried, it's crispy, it's crunchy, but because it's been in the soup, the very outside of it has gone soft and a little bit chewy. Nice texture contrast in there. And of course, fried fish is always damn tasty. I actually can't believe I'm going to say it, but I think I actually prefer the fish cake to the fried fish. Not because it's bad, but because the fish cake is so good and so flavorful and works so well in this broth. I tell you that was absolutely fantastic. And it's just going to cost me 40K. And that's because I ordered special. That can be it, I think is what it's called. I tried to say it anyway. So I definitely got the special. If you want the normal, it's 30K. Absolute bargain of street food here in District 2, Saigon. Of course, guys, I will leave the pin for this place. Super easy to find on the corner, but I will leave the pin in the description as ever. If that is the start of things to come, I cannot wait. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned, subscribe for more videos in Vietnam and a few special guests on the channel in the next couple of weeks. Take care guys, see you in the next one.